Hello again, Indie Warriors. Welcome back to I Dream of Vindy. I'm Old Gamer Joe here with another review for you today. If it's your first time here, so good to have you. Be sure to hit that subscribe button below, along with the bell notification to keep up with all the latest indie game reviews and previews. Today we are reviewing Cathedral on the Nintendo Switch. This action platformer was developed by Decemberborn AB. Looks like it's their first game and published by Elden Pixels. The game is normally priced at $14.99, however, at the time of this review, a pre order discount was available, bringing it down to $11.99. So, Cathedral, yes, it puts you in control of a nameless knight, though you can actually choose a name if you so wish, and the game's actually quite cryptic in its storytelling, so it's a little hard to get into the finer details, and I won't in this review as we don't like to spoil things, but here's the main idea. You're dealing with an evil demon known as Ardor, and the main goal of the game is to collect five different orbs in order to unlock a chamber within this cathedral. This is your warning right now, Cathedral is a very challenging game. It's also a massive title, spanning over 20 hours of gameplay if you're trying to collect every hidden item scattered across the game's numerous worlds. You'll begin your quest with a standard sword attack and you have the ability to jump as you might expect, but as you progress further you'll also unlock new abilities for your knight including spirits that can help in combat and with some of the game's light puzzles, and arrows which can be flung from a distance to strike enemies and flip switches. Eventually you'll also arrive in the town of Ivystone, here you can purchase various armor upgrades, restore your health, and find other items to help you along the way. You're going to need all the help you can get. When I say the areas in Cathedral are massive, I truly mean it. You'll spend hours exploring every nook and cranny, bashing blocks to find secrets, and taking down a pretty wide variety of different enemies. The game fuses various elements from the 8-bit era together, including combat reminiscent of DuckTales and Castlevania on the NES, just to name a few. Heck, at times the game will even reach into Mega Man's old bag of tricks with the classic disappearing block scheme. Oh yeah, you know you love these. Controls in Cathedral are pretty well laid out for the most part and responsive, but be prepared for plenty of frustration at times. Many of the game's enemies offer up cheap patterns designed to knock you off ledges, and most of them deal out really massive damage. As if that weren't challenging enough, you'll also be penalized 10% of your gold when taking a death. Now that said, Cathedral is reasonable with its checkpoints, but it's no cakewalk and it demands quite a bit out of the player. Thankfully, to help level out the difficulty at least a little bit, there are plenty of heart pieces to be collected so that will raise your overall health, and that's a good thing in a game like this. So yeah, this game requires a lot of patience, but at the same time, it's always worth the pain because the map design throughout is really quite excellent. I enjoyed exploring all of the different areas, and finding the secrets was really one of the more exciting parts of this game for me. What's really cool is that eventually you will find maps for these areas, and they're fairly helpful. They show you the areas that you've yet to explore, and they often point to a soft spot in the map where you can break through and find a secret. You can also expect to do plenty of backtracking. The teleport system works really well though. You're able to get from area to area with no problem whatsoever. So if you do have to revisit certain maps, it's not really an issue. And you will because certain abilities unlock certain secrets. Obviously now the developer has gone with an 8-bit aesthetic here and I think it looks fantastic. I was floored with all the detail that went into the map design, the animations are wonderful, and the enemy designs are pretty solid throughout as well. There's some nice little visual touches around the edges, like your knight's armor changing color when you purchase a new upgrade, and the boss encounters, while I could have done with a few more, were nostalgic and pretty well done. It's the soundtrack here though that truly steals the show. Cathedral sounds incredible with a good range of hard-hitting chiptune tracks reminiscent of a true NES classic. The production values of this soundtrack were really top-notch and despite the fact that you will spend a lot of time in certain areas hearing the same track over and over and over, they truly never graded on me that much. In fact, the more I listened, the more I caught myself humming along to these songs. This high quality also carries over to the sound effects of the game, from the wisp of making a jump to the satisfying crunch of bashing an enemy with your sword, Cathedral really does deliver on all fronts in the audio department. Cathedral is a tough game, as I mentioned, but not quite rage quit inducing, I would say. I never really felt the need to rip my card out of my Switch or anything. Well, I guess it was a digital download, but you get the point. You'll get tons of content in this package, and for its price tag, it's really hard not to recommend this one. There's some really solid platforming and combat here, the maps are well thought out, and the 8-bit visuals accompanied by one of my new favorite soundtracks are pure bliss together. You'll likely be shouting a few expletives here or there, but at the end of the day, Decemberborn have delivered a really great action platformer at a low cost, except for, you know, your sanity at times.
We would like to take a moment now to thank our great indie warriors who support us through channel memberships. Remember, memberships are just $1.99 and include all perks. Mitchell Hall, Kevalo Bunny, Bill T. Kaz, Christian Cruz, Wesley William Semple. Thank you for all you do for I Dream of Indie. You are the heartbeat of this channel. Everybody else should head down to the description box below where there's a ton of different ways to support us. However you end up doing so, it really means the world. And thank you so much for supporting independent content.